Hello everyone and welcome to Big Rock Moto. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Motorcycle GPS navigation devices. We are spoiled in that we have so many more choices today than we have ever had before. However, one of the downsides sometimes of having more choices is that it can be hard to decide what product is best for you. Now, I'm gonna tell you right up front, there is no winner of this test of this buyer's guide. There is no quote unquote best motorcycle navigation system. It is gonna be entirely up to the specific needs that you have with your own riding. So here's what you can expect out of today's video. I'm gonna go through each type of navigation system, all the main navigation systems that are available out there for motorcycles, and I'm gonna give you my brutally honest pros and cons of each type of setup. Hopefully, once I give you all the information, you'll have a better understanding of what kind of navigation system might be best for you, your bike, and the type of riding that you like to do. So as we get going into this, drop a comment below and let me know what is your preferred motorcycle navigation system if you've found one. Let me know what that is down in the comments below. Now, I just have a quick favor to ask as we jump in here. Big Rock Moto is largely supported or substantially supported by affiliate sales income. I'm always very upfront and transparent about that. So my favor is when you're shopping for riding gear, apparel, parts, whatever it might be, navigation systems for instance, please use my affiliate links, which are in all my videos in a pinned comment and a description. They're also on the channel page of my main YouTube channel. So please check out those links and use them whenever you're shopping. Uh, it really helps keep this channel going, and I would very much appreciate that. All right, there's some considerations that you need to make, um, and just be thinking about these things as we go through the list of these different types of systems. Uh, first off, what is your budget? Second, uh, do you need a permanent mount, or are you gonna move the system between bikes? Are you riding on-road, off-road, or both? Are you going to be riding in areas without cell service? Do you want to be able to mirror applications directly from your phone? And finally, do you prefer a smaller screen or a larger screen for your navigation device? All right, first option I wanna talk about. What if you just wanna simply use your phone for motorcycle navigation? Now, this makes a lot of sense because you probably already have a smartphone. Now, when we're talking about mounting a phone on your motorcycle to be used for navigation, I've tested a lot of different mounts, and the only mount that I can really endorse, uh, fully endorse, and I'm not sponsored by them, if that helps your decision, is Quadlock. The Quadlock mount system, you know, go on their website, you can build your own mounting setup for whatever bike you have and whatever needs you have. Get the case for your phone like I've got right here on mine. Get the vibration isolator system that Quadlock has, that will protect the camera and the electronics, the sensitive electronics in your a lot, you know, thousand dollar, twelve hundred dollar, whatever these are, smartphone. So I fully endorse the quad lock mounts. I've used them for many years, never had a single issue with them. All right, so what are the pros of using your phone as a navigation device? The first pro is that you already have it. You do not have to go out and spend three hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, eight hundred dollars on a motorcycle GPS system. Another pro to doing this is that your phone is a multifunction device. You've got social media, which everybody is addicted to now. Uh, you've got navigation, you've got uh, all your messaging, you've got your email, you've got different apps you can use. Um, it's a very powerful device. You, you have all that on the handlebars of your motorcycle. Another big pro to using a cell phone, a smartphone, is that you can use whatever mapping or navigation or GPS application that you would prefer to use. Your cell phone has a GPS sensor in it, so it gets your location and it's able to plot your location. And then you can use whatever you want. Google Maps, Waze, Gaia, Onyx, uh, different topo map applications, DMD2. There's an endless list of them and you can use whatever you want. Now, there are a list of downsides of using your phone as your motorcycle navigator. Uh, the first is that your phone is expensive. In fact, this phone is more expensive by far than any of the other devices on this table. The next downside to using your phone is that you are now exposing your cell phone uh, to a pretty harsh environment. Uh, the sun beating down on it, 
uh, the wind, rain, mist, uh, dust, you know, dirt if you're riding off-road. So all those things are going to have increased wear and tear on your phone. And personally, I've had issues, you know, the charge ports on these are not really designed to be used when it's raining or dirty. You have issues with that. Also overheating, sitting in the sun. So those are some downsides. Another downside to doing this is that using, uh, you know, the GPS application on your phone potentially is going to drain your battery faster when you're doing that. I also kind of touched on this, but another downside is sometimes the phones, when they're left in the sun, which is going to be on your handlebar, and they're plugged into charging, and you're using applications, there's just too much heat. The heat builds up, and the phone, at least mine have done this on this one. This is an S22 Samsung Galaxy. I've had other phones do this, where they just overheat, and that can be a problem. Another downside is that unlike having a dedicated uh, navigation unit, when you need to do something with your phone, you're going to have to turn off the GPS application or get or ex, you know, quit that, exit that screen, go do the other stuff you're doing, move the phone back and forth to the handlebars, and then restart your GPS or mapping application and get that going. So that could be something you got to think about. Now, I'm not going to really give you all the apps you can use for navigation. Uh, the ones that I personally like, uh, Google Maps, when I'm online, it's just great for road navigation, navigating places, got live traffic route updates, all that kind of stuff. For backcountry kind of navigation, I really do like the Gaia, and I like Onyx. Um, also, check out Drive Mode Dashboard 2 or DMD2, which is an amazing motorcycle navigation application. All right, next up, I wanna talk about Garmin navigation devices. So this is gonna be your Zumo XT, XT2, Garmin Montana, Garmin Tread, motorcycle specific navigators that Garmin makes. All right, so what are the pros to using a Garmin system? Uh, number one, these are purpose built to be mounted on your motorcycle and exposed to the continuous harshness of the weather, vibration, the bright sun, and all those sorts of things. And that's a huge advantage. Next up on the pros for me is the, the screens on these are designed to be used in direct sunlight with all the reflections and everything. They're bright, they're glove friendly on the touch screen, and the screens just work well in a motorcycle environment. Another upside to this kind of device is that the way that the charging cradle, the mounting cradle works on a motorcycle, how it interfaces with this, you not going to have any issues with weatherproofing, water, dust, things like that. It's a completely sealed weatherproof system, probably more so than your phone would be. The next pro, and I think the largest and most significant pro to me, and why I tend to always go back to this, is that this is a dedicated GPS device. It has its own GPS sensor inside of it. So, if you have some, something wrong with your phone or that your battery's dead in your phone or you break your phone, you lose your phone, you still have navigation if you have one of these. Also, this is not reliant and tethered to your phone in any way other than Bluetooth if you want for calls and music. What that means is that you don't have to have that battery sapping Android Auto or Apple CarPlay connection like you would have with the tablets. So you don't have to worry about that. That also means that you don't have to worry about downloading maps to your phone before you go on your trip if you're gonna be riding in areas without cell service. Because this doesn't depend on cell service for anything, you just don't have to worry about that. Another upside to this is that you can easily move this by buying a different cradle and power cable between different motorcycles or different, uh, if you have quads or side-by-sides or a Jeep or whatever, you can move it between different things very easily with a small added expense of buying that additional cradle. Another upside to these is that they are going to have some uh, Bluetooth uh, functionality for connecting to your phone for basic controls of music, phone calls, and things like that. What are the downsides to using a Garmin? Uh, number one is gonna be cost. You know, like I said, you already have a cell phone, right? So now you're looking at spending an additional, I think the X-T2 is around five or 600 bucks, uh, this thing right here. So that's a significant amount of money. Another downside that I've mentioned, and some people somewhat disagree with me on this, but the, the map on, on these, I don't think it's that great. Like, it doesn't seem even as powerful as your cell phone. It's kind of laggy when you move around. It has to draw the map. 
The map display is not the greatest. It's not as good as like when you pull up Gaia on your phone or your tablet. So not a huge deal, but just something that I wanted to bring up. Another potential downside, depending on which one you have, the X-T2 is a lot better with this, but getting those track or route files from your phone to the device, Garmin makes things super overcomplicated and ridiculous. They've, they have a, they've always had a major issue with software and just making it easy to use. They have gotten better, this one is better, but that can be a downside. Another downside is the maps on this will go out of date. So unlike your phone where, because it's connected to the internet, it's always kind of getting updates, the map's always in the newest version. Not the case with this. You are gonna to have to do run map updates on this uh, at some kind of regular interval as well, as well as updating the software. Meaning you're gonna to have to take it off your bike, probably bring it into your house, plug it into power, connect it to Wi-Fi, and get those updates happening. Another downside on this is that it's not really a multifunction device. You're paying 500 or 600 bucks just for a GPS and you're not getting additional functionality that you might out of some of the other stuff. All right, next up, let's talk about what I like to call phone tethered tablets. What do I mean by a phone tethered tablet? Well, it's an important distinction to understand. Something like the Carpuride tablets, I've got a couple of them here. This is seven inch, this is a five inch. You can see the difference. I've got the Chigi devices, this is the BMW one, this is the universal one. What I mean is that these, in order for these to function whatsoever, uh, you, they have to be tethered to your phone wirelessly through Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, meaning they don't work unless your phone is working and connected through that system. So the main devices, I, I guess I've already mentioned it, but the main ones out there that people seem to be going towards are the Carpy Rides and the Chigis. There are others for sure, but those seem to be some of the main ones right now. Now don't confuse these with something like this, which is a DMD drive mode dashboard tablet or the Carpe Eter tablet that are out there. These have dedicated GPS uh, receivers in them and have their own software uh, to run things. That's different. Right now we're gonna talk about the tethered devices. So what are the pros to something like this? Um, they can be less expensive than all the other stuff here. So you can pick up these Carpuride tablets uh, for, if you use, I have a 30% off discount code, I'll put that below, make sure you use that if you buy one. Uh, you know, 200 to $300, that's a pretty good deal for something like this. So more affordable option. Now, because these mirror the applications on your phone through Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, it means that you can use pretty much whatever mapping or GPS application you would like. Unlike with, uh, where's my Zumo? Unlike with this, where you're just stuck with the Garmin mapping application, if you have one of these tablets, you can use Onyx, you can use Gaia, you can use DMD2, you can use Google Maps, you can use Wise, or not Wise, uh, Waze. Uh, <laughs> so you have more options. Also, because of that, if you're using an application uh, that's always giving you the traffic updates, like I like to use Google Maps when I'm you know, doing in-town or city stuff, uh, you can use that, whereas you can't use Google Maps on a Garmin Zumo. Another advantage is you have different choices in screen sizes. That's one thing I really like about the Carpy Ride tablets. You know, you can get the, the big seven inch one, which is nice on the larger bikes. If you have a more of a dual sport, you might wanna look at, you know, maybe the five inch tablets. Um, I should also mention that with Carpy Ride and with the Chigi now, they are offering options if you have a BMW for things that plug directly into the BMW uh, built-in GPS mounting cradle that already comes on your bike. So no wiring. So just wanted to throw that out there. Now, another advantage to some of these, and particularly with this Chigi system, the AIO5, um, you can see all the wires coming off it. That's because it connects to dash cams. So if you are somebody who needs to have uh, recording cameras on the front and the back of your bike for whatever reasons that you need that, then the Chigi supports that and they work very, very well. I've tested this device. I had this on my Tiger 900 during the time I owned it and the dash cams are great. So you have that feature. The other advantage, because you're using Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, you can pull up 
uh, almost any app on these screens while you're riding your motorcycle. So if you use music, whatever it is, Pandora, uh, YouTube Music, Spotify, um, whatever other apps you might want to use, uh, as long as they have an Android Auto version of that or Apple CarPlay version, you can pull that up on the screen. Now, what are the downsides to using a uh, phone tethered tablet like a CarPlay Ride or Chigi? Uh, the main one for me, and it's, it's a big one, is that these do not have their own GPS receiver. So if you think about what that means, it means that it's completely reliant on your phone for a GPS signal. And there are a few downsides to that which we should talk about. It really comes down to sort of um, reliability out, in the, out when you're on these rides. If you're an adventure rider or a dual sport rider, this may be more important to you. If you're more of just a road touring rider, you may not care about this stuff as much, but you just, it's for me, I really like having multiple sources of a GPS signal if something goes wrong with either one, because I ride in areas where I don't know that I'm gonna safely get out of there easily without having some sort of a GPS. It's just so many roads, uh, dirt roads and things from the places I like to ride. Another downside is these don't have their own built-in maps. So it's completely reliant upon you to go on your cell phone before your trip and download the maps into your navigate into your mapping application before you go on the ride. If you don't do that, you will not have a map once you leave cell phone service coverage. Uh, depending on where in the world you're riding, this can be a huge issue. Now, it does work. So what I do is like when I've used the Carpy Ride on my recent uh, trip uh, in Northern California, I had I downloaded all the maps offline into Gaia on my phone. And then when this was connected, it had those maps. It did not need cell phone coverage. Another potential and serious downside that I've personally found to using this kind of device is that because it's tethered to your phone, what happens is that your phone battery, because it's running wirelessly that Bluetooth or, and or Wi-Fi connection to, to mirror everything to the tablet, your battery drains a lot faster and your phone gets a lot hotter and mine actually overheats. Even inside of a tank bag, I have to plug it into charger to keep the battery from draining. Plus I have issues with Gaia not working right and, and not loading the maps if, the, if my phone battery is getting low and I don't plug it in for some weird reason. But when I plug it in, I get overheating issues on my phone using the apps that I have with the tablet. So again, it comes back to the interdependency between the phone and the tablet itself. And sometimes, sometimes there can be issues with that. Could depend on the phone you have, the software you have, all the, you know, the temperature outside, all these things. But all that is to say, I've had less than perfect reliability with the things like this. All right, next up, I wanna talk about a specific device as opposed to really a category because it's kind of in its own category. And this is the TrailTech Voyager Pro. All right, so the advantages to the TrailTech device is that it is an all-in-one device designed for adventure, dual sport, and off-road motorcycles. What do I mean by all-in-one? Well, as I scroll through the screens here, uh, it gives you ways to hook up to the motorcycle sensors for things like a tachometer, engine temperature readout, all sorts of stuff like that, which can be very, very useful because a lot of dual sport motorcycles don't have really any instrumentation to speak of besides the speedometer. So you get that ability here with the Voyager Pro. Another pro to this is like the Garmin's and like the other dedicated devices, it does have its own GPS antenna. It does not rely on your phone to get a GPS signal or for any mapping. So you've got built-in maps, which you can change, built-in GPS sensor. So you've got that redundancy and that reliability baked in. Some other cool things about it, it's got the buddy tracking feature. Now you have to buy the little plug-in antenna for this. And it would mean that all of your riding buddies would have to have the same device with the same antenna. Uh, so that could be a challenge. But if you did that, you have this cool thing where it's gonna show all of you on the map as you're riding. That's really, really cool if you're doing like a club dual sport ride or something like that. Also, just like the Garmin's and other devices, with multiple cradles, which you can buy, you can wire the cradle into different bikes and then easily clip in and out 
the Voyager Pro between different motorcycles. What are the downsides to the Voyager Pro? So in my testing, um, the biggest downside for me is that I found the screen to be a bit small and a bit limiting. It's just not a great screen and I think the device is starting to show its age in that respect. The device is also pretty expensive, um, you know, compared to the other things here. So you've got to factor that in, but also weigh that against the fact that you're getting additional instruments that can connect to the bike if that's something you need. The other downside, and we kind of already talked about the display, but I just found the maps, the, the included maps, and I don't know if there's a way to, to maybe update it or improve it, but the map screen, I just didn't find to be very good. It was kind of hard to see the roads and trails on the screen. The topo feature didn't seem to be that great. So I just found the map display itself, the software and the interface of that map and how it looks to be kind of a challenge. All right, next up, I wanna talk about dedicated motorcycle navigation tablets with their own built-in GPS unit. So the distinction on this category, first of all, this is gonna be your DMD tablet, which I'm holding here, or your Carpe Iter, and I don't know if I'm saying that right, but that's a very, very popular one out there. The distinction between this tablet and this Carpe Ride tablet is that this is a, a GPS itself. It has a GPS uh, receiver in it, and it also runs on its own uh, software, which is Android-based, um, and of course you're running DMD on this tablet because this is a DMD tablet, but you're not reliant, again, you're not tethered to your phone. So you don't need your phone uh, to do any sort of navigation. It's all built into the unit. So what are the pros to a device like this? Well, first of all, it has specifically been engineered and built to withstand uh, the abuse of being on a motorcycle, just like the Garmin I mentioned earlier. So wind, rain, water, mud, whatever it might be, vibration, don't have to worry about that. So if you're thinking, oh, I'm just gonna use my iPad or my Samsung tablet or whatever uh, Amazon, whatever tablet you have, which you can get for a couple hundred dollars nowadays, probably less than that, I'll just throw that on my motorcycle. Well, not so fast because the screen and the sunlight, the dust, the water, the vibration, all these things, this, this is the hardware of this is specific for motorcycle use. Another benefit to something like this is it's a large, bright, readable screen. These come in different sizes. This is the larger DMD uh, tablet, but extremely bright, contrasty, good with gloves, easy to use. Another pro to this, and we've kind of already said this, but this is a dedicated GPS device, just like a Garmin. You don't have to worry about being reliant on your phone for anything. Another pro uh, to a device like this is it gives you access to use different applications for your mapping. Now, I've tested a number of these, and for me, and, I, and I'm not, like, I don't have any financial incentive to say this, but the DMD2 software, Drive Mode Dashboard 2 software, uh, it was developed specifically by Adventure Motorcycle Riders, and that really shows it is the best like adventure off-road or motorcycle navigation software, and it works great on the highway too, by the way, that I've ever tested. It is phenomenal. And as I've gotten used to using it on this DMD tablet, I really like it. You can also run it on other tablets and you can run it on the Carpe E-Tier uh, tablet, and a lot of people do. So it gives you access to that, which I just find to be amazing. Some other pros to this, you can get cradles so you can move it between different bikes and really notable with a device like this or the other tablets like this, you can get handlebar mounted controllers. Uh, so that is so nice. I have one of those, uh, or I did on the gas gas that I recently showed, showed on the channel. And you can uh, you know, move the map, zoom the map, go through the menus with your hands never leaving the handlebar. A good thing for rally racers and things like that, that they need that. But even for the average rider, man, this thing is so nice. Now, what are the downsides to a device like this? The only downside that I've found is just the cost. I don't really have any other downsides to give you. All right, well, I think that about sums up all the different categories of motorcycle navigation. Now, I hope I haven't missed something. I tried to do my research. I tried to test everything I could over the past several years. Making a short video like this seems pretty simple on the surface, but actually it was kind of the culmination of years of testing different products, mounting different products on different bikes and going out and testing it in the real world under real world conditions. And that's how I'm able to formulate my opinions. Uh, I really don't like to do unboxing videos or first impression videos. Sometimes I do, but I try not to do that. 
So I hope this comparison with all the pros and cons has been useful. So again, I have a huge favor when you're shopping for anything motorcycle related, please use my affiliate links below. It makes a big difference and I would really, really appreciate that. If you have questions, comments, or concerns, put that down below and I'll try to get back to you. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. Ride safe and I'll see you out there.